new Seahorses album? When you guys start recording? Um, we start recording in <coughs> Biscuits, Biscuits. Yeah, um, Aren't they good? They're great, these. Uh, we start recording the album in um, March, March, yeah, and it's out in July. There are more songs of you on the, the new album, you think? Because well, most songs on this album are by John. Yeah, but that was just the way it went. He didn't really know me that well, so I mean, I've got loads of songs, and he's got loads of songs, so we'll see. I mean, it's not going to be a matter of half and half, you know, just for half and half's sake. It's going to be whoever's got the best song, so... Uh-huh. You always write the lyrics, or in your mind? Yeah, all the lyrics are yours. Well, not all. Of, well, John's got his songs, and he writes all the lyrics and all the music, and I've got my songs, and I write all the lyrics. And you all don't split it up like I want to write the songs, I want to write the lyrics, or whatever. No, nah, not really. No, because I mean, <coughs> I mean, if John was um, gonna write some really shit lyrics, it was just impossible for me to even get my head around or sing you know if I didn't understand it then I'd, I'd sort of try and change him but fortunately he's explained him in such a manner that I can get my head around what they're about uh, so I don't mind you know initially it was a bit weird singing someone else's lyrics and stuff but uh, could you relate to them at all or? Um, some of them I did yeah it was weird with me and John because it's when I first met him I'd just split up from being in a band for five years and he'd just split up with the Roses and stuff and I know that fair enough the band I was in wasn't like anything like the Roses you know and, I mean no one had ever heard of us but it was still the same friendships and shit that go sour and all that so it was um, I'd written a few songs like that so uh, how do you avoid uh, making like the same mistakes with a band like you know getting into fights and arguments I mean how do you avoid you it along. um just not get too uh precious about it all just remember why you're doing it I have to keep reminding myself that I'm actually in a band because I don't want a job and uh if you start thinking of it as an occupation and a job and taking it too seriously then it all goes wrong and um I've learned that from touring and stuff like that you can really get on top of you if you take it too seriously if you just chill out and sit back have a spliff you're fine you know and just say no, it don't really matter isn't uh, isn't uh, uh, going on tour uh, the worst part of your job as being a musician isn't what sorry isn't going on tour the worst part of being a musician because no. we're actually totally out I guess I thought it was actually at the beginning I thought it was crap I, I really hated it I couldn't stand touring I thought it was um <coughs> like playing live and all the rest of it I just thought it was just too much it's just too much to ask but now it's like I really enjoy it now and the more you do it the better you get it you know and it's like anything you know it's one of those things you have to be you have to be in your zone to do it really well you know and uh, and I'm in mine at the moment so that's good so, <laughs> in Holland we think a lot of uh, the reason why the best bands are from either England or Britain or the uh, US of A is that uh, British bands or American bands really go all the way for their music is that true you think you guys work harder for your music I think anybody that's into music does it don't they in their own little way so why aren't there any good bands in Holland isn't there can you name any no you're right but I'm not from Holland though am I so you know you've got a better picture of it than I have um, I don't know I think You guys work your ass off. Yeah, yeah, we do. We haven't had a day off for for, for ages. So wouldn't really you be better off working in a factory? I'm doing an interview now, you know what I mean? Would I have been better off working in a factory? No, I wouldn't. I'd would have been better off... Um, I'm be- <laughs> Fuck off, Stuart. <laughs> But uh, no, no, factories. I nearly did get a job in a factory. My mum and dad really wanted me to get a job in a factory because I used to be a busker and I used to play music on the streets and stuff. And mum and dad wanted me to get a proper job. But um, I always was adamant that I didn't want one. Because you got to make your mind up, haven't you? You've got to either live to work or work to live. You've got to make your mind up which one you're going to do. And I just figured that if you're going to, you know... Um, work to live then you just got to do something you enjoy whereas my dad lives to work you see so you really played on the street mm. yeah well that's where I got spotted by a mate of John's it's a really romantic story and I don't really like talking about it because it's uh, ah, come on tell it no, it's, it's just uh, the record company love this story it's all like real fairy tale bollocks but it's uh, 
It's the truth. I was I was busking on the streets of York and um, a friend of Martin, Martin's John's guitar technician, walked past. And he said, uh, oh, like, what are you doing? Uh, have you got any tapes and stuff? My mate's looking for a singer for his band. And I was like, all oh, right, uh, yeah, OK, then. Uh, gave him a tape. And he, I said, who's your mate? And he was like, oh, it's John Squire. You know, that bloke used to be in this... And I was like, oh, the Stone Roses, yeah. And I, yeah, I've heard of John Squire. And uh, I remember being quite excited about it all, really. John came to see me, sort of, I think it was for three... Came to see three gigs of mine took three gigs to convince him I can't believe that man. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, yeah, he, um, he asked me to join the band and I deliberated for a few seconds and then I said yeah alright then and here I am now in a little bar in Amsterdam talking to you counting your money I don't know. <laughs> tax man's counting my money man because <laughs> that's always the story you hear <clears throat> uh, well, musicians uh, when they have a first record out uh, even Oasis they go you go like so you guys must be multimillionaires they're like uh, no somebody else must be counting my money yeah yeah I don't know well it's not really come into it yet because we're um, being ripped off <laughs> <laughs> fucking hope not <laughs> no it's just uh, you know it takes a while for you to pay your advance back and stuff Hey, some musicians find it really hard to play in front of a crowd I mean Andy Partridge of uh, ex- ex- he's yeah. like why bother being a musician if you can't play in front of people I never understood that I know a few people who do it I know a few people in York that are fantastic musicians but they just haven't got the balls to get up and do it and it's like why not you know they'd rather sit in the bedroom and no, but you had a good you had a good start I mean you started on the street probably the hardest crowd you'll find Um, it's usually it's, it can be the best crowd or it can be the most indifferent crowd it doesn't really you know, sometimes it's, you either get a lot of attention or you don't get any, and you get used to it. But uh, you do, it does make you better on stage, I suppose, because you, you have to have that sort of... Um, I don't know what it is, but you've got to be able to get the crowd going without really doing much, you know, without doing somersaults and all the rest of it, you know. Usually I do it with singing. I used to scream my head off really loud. You had to be able to scream so they could hear you on the other side of York. And uh, yeah, I'm quite proud of my loud voice, so it's, it's cool. <laughs>